Hello and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Yusuf and today I will show you how you can set up and simulate heat transfer in a YouTube. The agenda for today looks as follows. I will again show you what you are going to learn in this tutorial, what steps are involved in the simulation and how we can split up these steps. And then at the end, of course, as always, we will have the demo where I will show you step by step how you can set up the simulation. So what are you going to learn? Today we'll have a look at a very special kind of simulation. But first we prepare the geometry to make it suitable for our simulation purposes. Today we will have a look at the so-called conjugate heat transfer module. And that actually calculates the interaction between solid and fluid when it comes to heat transfer. I will show you exactly how you can set up the simulation and we will have a quick look at the post-processing of this simulation. As always, the underlying equation to solve these kind of problems is the famous Navier-Stokes equation, which you can see on the slide. It's basically nothing else than Newton's second law of motion. I always like to show this formula because first of all it's very famous of course, and it's very beautiful at the same time. And of course if you have a theoretical, let's say, weakness for fluid flow simulation, and if you want you can pause and ponder for a moment to really appreciate the beauty of this formula. Steps involved in the simulation look as follows. So we have the real world problem, in our case the YouTube, and this problem has to be somehow translated into a partial differential equation, or a set of partial differential equations, which is in our case the Navier-Stokes equation, which of course has to be adapted for this particular kind of purpose, but I showed you the general Navier-Stokes equation on the previous slide. This is then transformed into an algebraic system of equations, which can be understood by our computer. This is then coded and implemented into our system. We actually don't have to do this, so everything is inside of SimScale. So don't worry about that too much. What we try to make sense of is the generated data. So this code generates data. And in the post-processing step, we are trying to really make sense of what's actually coming out of the simulation. If you have any questions regarding the slides or the equations that I showed you, feel free to reach out to us via the forum and I will open a dedicated section for this specific simulation. So please don't hesitate to contact us if you have any questions. With that being said, let's jump straight into the simulation and let's get started. Hello and welcome to the workbench. So here we have the heat exchange as you can see. So usually we start with the pre-processing step as you have seen in the slides. And as you can see, this geometry is not watertight. So that means if we put water inside of here, it will basically flow out and nothing is preventing it from flowing out basically. So you don't have to go back to your CAD software. SimScale can actually do this for you. What we do now is to pre-process the CAD properly in order to use it for your simulation. What I do for that is go to heat exchanger, so my geometry, add a geometry operation and go to open inner region. So first I select these two tiny faces here in front and as for the seed phase, I select one inner face, let's say that one. Then I start my geometry operation, but for that, make sure to select keep existing parts. Otherwise the rest would vanish and would look quite odd actually. So make sure to check that and then start your run. This will take a few seconds. And once it has been done, we can jump to the next geometry operation. So the geometry operation has been finished, but as you can see, this was just for one region. So what you can see is that this part is not closed yet. So what we want to do is to open the inner region for modeling the outer region. So for that, let us just close this one and we go to the geometry again, geometry operation, and then open inner region again. And for the boundary phases, we select this tiny face right here, but make sure to also select this tiny face right here, otherwise it will give you an error. Perfect. And the seed face is that face inside. And with that, make sure to also click keep existing parts, otherwise the rest would vanish. And we click on start. And after a few seconds, you should be done with this region. The next thing we are going to do is the so-called imprint operation. So as you can see, the inner region has been defined. So we have this closed and we have this closed. So what's missing now? As I promised to you, we do the imprint operation now. And why is that useful? This is actually useful to detect interfaces later on. And these faces will then later on act as contact faces. So we go to heat exchanger, select the context menu and go to imprint. And we start the operation. This will also take a few seconds and you can see once we set up the simulation, it will automatically detect the context and have been detected by the imprint operation. And if you want more information about the imprint, you can find them in the documentation. I'll link the page down below. 
So, and now the imprint operation has been finished and we are good to go. We click on heat exchanger and go to create simulation. Then, as I promised, we do a conjugate heat transfer analysis. And what that means is basically that we want to simulate the heat transfer between solid and fluid. So let us create a simulation. So we don't want to have a laminar turbulence model, but we choose the K-Omega SST model. But quick hint here, as you can see, the contacts have been loaded and it has detected 79 standard interfaces. If you click on it, it's an interface thermal and we have it as coupled interface thermal. And you can select several things here. If you want more information about that, feel free to check out the documentation. So we go to conjugate heat transfer and as I said, we choose K Omega SST as a turbulence model. Perfect. Next, we go to model and we want to add gravity. And as you can see in the coordinate system, gravity is acting in the negative Y direction. Perfect. What we have to do next is to define materials one time for the fluid region, actually two times and one time for the solid. So we click to fluid, click on water, click apply, and then we choose our flow regions, which are, which are these two. Perfect. The solid will be made out of steel, click apply, and then the shell is automatically be assigned to it. If you want to adapt the parameters, of course, you can choose any other material and then adapt the parameters. I click on save. What I do now is to go to initial conditions, go to temperature, and I want to assign subdomains to specific temperatures. The first one being 100 degrees Celsius, which is the first flow region. I save it, then I go to the next subdomain, which will be the second flow region with a temperature of 80 degrees Celsius. And of course, we have the third subdomain, which is our shell with a temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. Once it has been done, we can finally define our boundary conditions. We'll start with, as usual, the velocity inlet. In this case, we want to have the inlet phase right here, and we have a velocity of minus 0.8. The temperature will be 80 degrees Celsius. I click on enter and enter again. And this has been saved right now. Of course, we also need an outlet phase. So I click on plus, click pressure outlet, and want to assign a fixed value and leave it as it is and click on save. Next, what I'm going to do is this was just for this region. Of course, we want to choose the other region as well. So I choose this phase right here and I want to assign a velocity inlet to it. This will be minus 0.5 with a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. Perfect. And as always, we have our beautiful combination of velocity inlet pressure outlet. So I choose this phase right here and I go to pressure outlet. The value will be kept the same as well. And I save this boundary condition. We can skip the numerics and we go straight to the simulation control. We leave this as it is and we set the interval to 100, which means we have 10 intervals at the end of the simulation, which we can have a look at. We leave this as automatic. If you want, you can, of course, if you have the pro version, you can go up to 96 cores if you want. Maximum runtime is fine. Next, we can go to mesh. And as you can see, we have chosen the standard meshing algorithm. The rest has been kept the same. So fineness is five, everything has been activated and so on. So we can save this and we can basically run our simulation. What I would recommend if you're a beginner in this kind of meshing procedure is to start the mesh, maybe slice through your mesh by using this mesh clip filter right here and then see if you like your mesh or if it is appropriate for your simulation. If not, make sure to put some iterations in there and optimize your mesh. Once you're happy with it, you can start the simulation one by clicking on this plus right here and starting your simulation. And of course, I have prepared something for you already, which is run one right here. And we can have a look at the post-processing results. So as you can see, I have already defined a slice or a cutting plane in this case, which shows us the velocity. You can choose the cutting plane if you want and then assign another scalar value to it. For example, let's say temperature. With that, you can see the temperature distribution across your plane right here and really see if that actually makes sense what we have done. And if you are skeptical, make sure to go back to your simulation setup and see if you missed something. So what I want to show you now is this is the whole geometry, right? So we go to parts at the very top and then we deactivate shell and we deactivate one of the flow regions, which was actually the wrong one. So it is the other one right here. What you can do then is, of course, have a look at the results from this particular 
region right here. So we go to results, maybe choose temperature. What you can see then is this is the temperature. So you can basically have a look at each particular part by choosing the parts above. So with that being said, if you have any questions regarding the simulation setup or your own simulation, feel free to reach out to us via the forum and we will be happy to help you out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Mm -hmm.